Hey everyone, Chris here from Varsity Gaming, and welcome to the 13th episode of Siege School. Now I know a lot of you are excited for Blood Orchid and all the new content it brings, so today I'm going to be talking about one of the new operators, Ella. Ella is the one Polish operator coming from Blood Orchid, and she is a defender. Now for the basics, she's a 3-speed, 1-armor operator sporting some fashionable yoga pants. For her special gadget, she has concussion mines, which are called Grismots or something like that. I'm actually not entirely sure how it's pronounced, but I prefer to call them Grismots. Grzmot. Grzmot. She can carry up to four of them and place them on any environment around the map, except for out of bounds. When an attacker walks in within four meters of the mine, it'll detonate and disorient the attacker and any other operators within the radius, including defenders and Ella herself. Disorientation is kind of similar to Yokai slash Echo in appearance, but it has a few different effects. When an operator is disoriented, they cannot sprint and they turn a lot slower. And unlike yokai, it doesn't go away by staying still. When you're disoriented by yokai, you can just lay on the floor and it'll go away really quickly. But for Ella's Grismont mines, it stays for a specific amount of time. So if you get hit by a Grismont, you can walk away if you want to, or lay down in a corner. It really does not matter. And something to note, the ability does not stack. So if you set up four Grismots at one door, it really is not going to look too much different from setting up one Grismot at the door. There might be a few small differences in the disorientation effect, but it'll still last the exact same amount of time. And lastly with this ability, she has a very unique attribute to it is that she's the only operator in the game that can do something in a down but not out state. If Ella's down, she can use her special ability to set off a Grisma in her hands to disorient the enemy before she dies. As kind of a last fuck you and as a way for other defenders to try to push the attacker after they killed her. And something that's super important to note that I actually didn't know until I tested it myself is that Ella can do this regardless of how many Grismots she has left in her inventory. Whether she has four or zero, she can still set off one in her hand. So it seems like she always keeps one on hand just in case if she ever gets downed. Alright, now we're going to move on to the interaction between Grismots and other gadgets before we talk about Ella's kit. Grismots are similar to Yokai in that they will make Monty drop his extended shield. So if you see a Monty holding a doorway or an angle in full shield, you can throw one of your Grismots, and if Monty's still close to it when the Grismot gets armed, it will make him drop his full shield. And another interaction is that it does make the attacker stop planting the diffusers similar to Yokai. So this can be good on bomb if you know that they're planting in a corner, you can throw the Grisma in the corner to make them stop, and if it's at the end of the round, then they won't be able to plant and you can win. As for their interaction with other gadgets, Grismots can be destroyed by Thatchers and Bandit batteries. And it can also be tracked by IQ since it is an electronic device. Those are three main ways to be destroyed, but they can also just be plain shot or hit by a grenade. And since they can be shot, you do kind of want to put them in a place where people won't be able to get an angle on them. One of the most common places is directly above a door, but slightly out of view so they can't just lay down and look straight up. This way, their only way to destroy it is with one of the gadgets mentioned previously, or to just jump in and take the hit. And keep in mind, since this gadget is very small, it is also very easy to miss. So a good strategy is to throw it in a corner or next to some rubble where the attacker really won't see it, and it, they'll only get affected by it once they're already inside the room. And the last thing I want to talk about with the Grismots, it's not necessarily an interaction, but it is a cool little mechanic of how the device works. It's that the Grismot disorientation effect does apply through destructible floors and reinforced hatches. So if there's a Grismot on the roof of a room, and attacker 1 goes through and sets it off, if attacker 2 is standing above the Grismot, they will also get disoriented by it. This only applies to floors that are destructible and on reinforced hatches. Or at least so far that we've found in our testings. This will rarely ever apply, but it is important to know. Alright, and that is it for the information on Ella's gadget Grismots. Now we're going to move on to her kit itself. Ella's equipped with two very powerful weapons that a lot of people are calling to be nerfed. The first of her guns is the Scorpion SMG. It has a fire rate of 1080, which is very high for a lot of SMGs on defense, and has a magazine of 50. This is huge because you can pretty much just spray and pray with her gun and also do a lot of damage very quickly. Although the gun does have a low damage count at 28, it is still enough to easily shred anyone. A lot of people are comparing it to Mirror's Vector since it has a very similar fire rate and is basically just a headshot machine. And her next weapon is a magazine-fed shotgun called the FO-12. Now a lot of people are calling this shotgun overpowered and I kind of agree. It has decent damage at 35 and has a magazine size of 10. And since it's magazine-fed, it can be shot very quickly. So pretty much you can walk into a room and just spray and pray with this shotgun and probably mow down a lot of people. But on the overall, I really do think that Ella's Scorpion is much more powerful and will definitely be picked over the FO-12 any day. The main reason for this is because the Scorpion can gauge at distances while the shotgun really can't. And when you're roaming, you can't always count on people being in close quarters, so you'll definitely have to be able to engage with them from a distance. But this is where her sidearm can come in handy. Ella's pistol is unique, kind of like Cavs, in that it has a special component on the pistol itself that cannot be removed. 
LS pistol has a red dot sight that is very small and has a very small frame, so it is very easy to snipe people from a distance with it. This is where the shotgun won't necessarily be a bad pick, because if you do see people from a distance, you can just whip out this pistol and easily snipe them from across the hall. But obviously in almost every single scenario, a scorpion will be much better than a sidearm. Now as for gadgets, she can bring impact grenades or barbed wire. Barbed wire on the overall seems to be a better choice because it can't be comboed with her gadget. You can put a grismont right above a door and put the barbed wire underneath, so that when they walk through, they get stuck in the barbed wire, get hit by the grismont, and they really can't do anything but sit there or slowly walk away. And since we've kind of touched on combos, we're going to move on to strategies with Ella. Now I do want to say this before I really get into it, is that I do not have too much time on Ella, but I have been analyzing a lot of the footage I have of her and trying to determine what good strategies are. And since it's still the beginning of the season, these strategies might not be that great and they could easily be swapped out for something better one week down the line. So while I'm not necessarily saying ignore all my advice from here on out, I am just saying keep your options open and try to discover new tactics for yourself. And also just another added thing is that she is very strong right now. Ella is one of the strongest new operators in the game, so it is very likely she will be nerfed within the next few weeks, possibly at the mid-season reinforcements. And because of that, any strategy I say now might be completely obsolete whenever she gets nerfed. And one last thing before we get into strategies, I do want to run something by you guys. For this first strategy that I'm about to mention, I do not have any footage at all. The reason for this is because the mi uh, the reason for this is because all the times that I've used the strategy before have all been on stream. And since I don't record or use stream footage in Siege School, I don't have anything for it. So I just want to run something by you guys. Are you guys okay with me using stream footage in these videos? It would save me a lot of time on making these videos and would make them a lot easier to make. However, the quality would go down because it'd only be in 720p and it would have all of the overlays from stream, so it wouldn't be just raw footage of the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below because I really do want your input on this. So anyways, we're going to get into the strategies, but just try to keep that in mind. One of my favorite strategies with Ella is what I call the safe camp. Basically what you do is you choose a room that you think the attackers are going to push, usually a room kind of close to sight that's kind of vital to pushing that objective, and then you set up your traps on all the entrances. And then what you do is you try to hide behind a surface or hide in a corner where you really can't be seen, and then you wait for the attackers to push in. Once they push in and get hit by your Grismont, then you can pop up and easily shoot them. There's no point of peeking and holding an angle on the door that they're going to push through because they'll get disoriented anyways. As long as you have good reaction time, you can easily pop up and shoot them as soon as they push in and get disoriented. You can also combo those with barbed wire by putting it at a door so that they really can't leave in case if you have a slower reaction time. The reason why this strategy is my favorite is because you're not putting yourself in a vulnerable state, so you'll be pretty safe while you're camping there. And then as well, when the attacker pushes in and gets hit by the Grismont, they're pretty much as good as dead. Since the disorientation affects the turning speed of an operator, they really won't be able to get out of there that quickly. So if they panic and try to run away, then you'll definitely have a better chance of killing them. If they try to stand their ground, then it might be a little bit harder. And now the other strategy is to pretty much treat her like any other roaming operator, is to be super aggressive with her. My favorite way to go about being aggressive with her is to basically set up traps randomly around the map. And then when an attacker pushes through there and sets off the Grismont mine, I'll use those as audio cues. Currently, a lot of people expect that when a trap is set up and they get hit by it, the person's immediately going to be there. And if they get hit by the trap and you're not there, they're going to assume it's safe. So they get hit by the trap and then you rotate in slowly behind. But in case if you don't want to do that, there's also another way to use her as a roamer. You can basically choose whether to put down all your traps right away or to keep them in your inventory. A lot of people do opt to hold them in their inventory because they want to use it as a way to engage in a fight. So the strategy is basically to roam like you would with any other operator slowly around the map and waiting for them to push. And as you hear them pushing, then you start to engage. Once you engage in a firefight with them, you can throw your Grismon at them and disorient them in the middle of the fight. At this point, you have the advantage and can easily push them and finish them off. Personally, I prefer setting them to traps way beforehand and then rotating in slowly after. But if you do prefer to be super, super aggressive, this is another way to go about doing it. Just remember to keep in mind that the Grismont Mine does take some time to activate before it goes off, after you've thrown it. So don't expect it to just explode as soon as it lands right next to the enemy. And then there's one more strategy which I'm not entirely sure how to categorize as it's kind of an anchoring type of strategy but doesn't necessarily require Ella to be there. The one thing you can do is just set up Grismots on site. A lot of people in ranked usually wait until the last 30 seconds or so to push, and this is where traps really come in handy. They'll be pushing in at the last second and get hit by a Grismot because they weren't planning on it being there or they completely forgot and were running out of time. So you set up Grismots in the doorways where you think they're going to push last second and then as soon as they push in they get hit by it and the remaining defenders can take them out, whether it be you or other anchors on site. This is why I think Ella requires a lot of communication to work. The disorientation really does not last that long so you really need to capitalize on the few seconds you have before the enemy is cognizant again. So as soon as a Grismot sets off, your team needs to capitalize on that kill and push as quickly as they can. And Ella also needs to be able to make those callouts, so if you're someone who doesn't communicate a lot, she might not be the operator for you. You need to be able to tell your teammates, hey, an Ella mine went off. Whether you know where that is or not, at least let them know so that they can try to keep an eye out. 
And if they do know where the operator is, then that gives them a lot more confidence to push as the person will be disoriented and won't be able to land a shot as easily. All right, and with those strategies covered, that is it for the information segment of this video. Now we're gonna move on to the game show segment. For those of you who don't know what it is, basically I ask you a question and give you 10 seconds on the clock. You come up with an answer and then I give you my answer. If you consider your answer to be similar to mine, then you can give yourself a point. At the end of the quiz, I'll put up a scoreboard for you to see how well you did. Now with that all covered, let's get into the questions. Question one. What is the color of the laser sight on Ella's sidearm? Keep in mind, I'm not asking what the color of the red dot is, but the laser sight itself, the thing that increases hip fire accuracy. With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up, and the answer is green. Every other operator in the game, no matter what weapon they're using, always has a red laser sight. But Ella's the only one who has a green one, and it's only on her sidearm. I'm assuming this is Ubisoft's way to give her a little more character, because on the overall, people were kind of disappointed with her ability, so people are guessing that they just tried to add in a few cosmetic changes to really make her unique. There's also a floating theory around the community that the next Polish operator will be Ella's twin. So my guess is that they're trying to make her stand out now, and then when her twin comes in, she'll have her own set of gadgets. It's a pretty common thing where twins want to be independent and stand out on their own instead of just being considered a twin, so maybe this is some sort of tie-in to that. But anyway, that's enough fan theory, we're going to move on to the next question. Question 2. What attachment can Ella's shotgun equip that no other shotgun in the game can equip? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. <laughs> And time's up. The answer is the extended barrel. So far in the game, there's only one other shotgun that can equip an attachment, and that is the SAS G12, or as a lot of other people call it, the sausage. But the sausage can only equip a silencer. Meanwhile, Ella's FO12 can equip both a silencer and an extended barrel. This is why a lot of people are claiming that her shotgun is overpowered, because with the extended barrel, you can do a lot of damage from far away. But in the overall, I do still think that the scorpion is the better pick. Question 3. What is the effective range on the Grismont Mines? And just to clarify, what I'm asking is how far away can you be from the mine and still be affected by it, even if you're not the one who set it off? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is about seven meters. So if one of your teammates is pushing ahead and sets off an Ella mine, even if you're a few meters back, you can still get hit by the effect, even if you didn't set it off yourself. What this also means is that defenders who are holding an angle not too close to the Ella mine, but close enough, can't also get hit by it because the attacker chose to push through there. So when you're defending, try to keep this in mind and try to keep a little more distance between you and the Grismod itself. Question 4. How long does the Grismod disorientation last for? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. The Grismont Concussion Effect lasts for just roughly over 7 seconds. Remember, what you do has absolutely no factor on how long it lasts. The Grismont Effect is a set amount of time. Whether you're 0 meters away, 7 meters away, running, or lying down, it'll always last the same amount of time. Now, the numbers you see on the screen might have a small variation between them, but realistically, it's close enough that it will have no effect in-game. The shortest time I saw was 6 seconds and 50 frames, whereas the longest time was 7 seconds and 13 frames. That's less than half of a second of a difference. And now it's time for the bonus question. What flavor are Ella's ice cream cones? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. <laughs> Time's up. And the answer is Earl Grey. And that is it for today's episode of Siege School. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope you learned something new. And as promised earlier, here are the scores based on how many questions you got right in the quiz. Let me know in the comments section down below how well you did. And as usual, quickly before I finish the video, two small plugs. One, I do stream on Twitch every single day except for Wednesdays now. I have started school again, so my schedule is a little more complicated and I won't be able to stream on Wednesday and maybe a few other days during the week if schoolwork does pile up. 
but on the overall it shouldn't be affected and I should be able to stream Siege most days. And plug number two, the Siege School shirt is available on my store. It's also available with a few other designs as well. If you want to take a look, just follow the link down below in the description or in the end card. Buying the shirts are a good way for you to support the channel as well as for you to get something in return. So if you want to get a shirt, make sure to pick up one today. And that's it for my plugs, and that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode of Siege School. Take care.